check out how Cannonball Adderley uses the blues scale in this lick from Work Song. Here's another lick from his Live in Tokyo 1963 recording. Now, I covered another lick in my previous video where I talk more about the form of work song, and I analyze another lick that fits over the end of the song. You could check it out by clicking above or in the description below. Now, work song is in concert F minor, so that's G minor for B flat instruments, D minor for E flat instruments. This particular lick starts around 3 minutes and 19 seconds into the video. So here it is again, at speed and slower if you want to pick it out by ear. Tenor players, do this down the octave because this goes into the altissimo range. Hi, I'm Donna from DonnaSchwartzMusic.com. Now, if you want more licks like this to build your vocabulary and tips to help you play your instrument with more confidence, hit that subscribe button, tap the bell to get notified when new videos are out. So before we take a closer look at this lick, let's review a concert F blues scale. First, we're going to form the concert F minor pentatonic scale, which is a five-note scale, uses the scale degrees 1, flat 3, 4, the 5, and the flat 7. Now just add the sharp 4 so that you have 1, flat 3, 4, sharp 4, 5, flat 7. Let's take a closer look at this lick to see how it works over the chords in the last part of the song. Okay, so here we are. Here's the lick for all instruments. I'm going to be kind of pointing around the, the tenor sax line for here. So this lick is actually, it's not measures 13, 14, 15, and 16 only. starts in measure 12. And in all honesty, when you listen to this lick, it's a little bit tricky to feel this because there's so much what we call syncopation. Syncopation is when... Normally, your quarter notes are on the beat. One, two, three, four. You feel those as quarter notes. A lot of you, when you put your metronome on, you know, you think about it ticking to the quarter note. Well, here's the thing. If this was the metronome, ba, 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 the quarter notes don't land on the downbeat. They're on the upbeat. So you're, you're feeling a lot of that. And by the way, here's a pro tip for you. We feel rhythms. We don't read them, okay? So when you're listening to this, I strongly recommend um, actually that, I'm just going to say this right now, don't watch this part of the video until you've kind of sort of gotten the, the lick as best as you can because you really need to feel these rhythms. All right, but anyway, I have to digress. I have to get back to this. So I mentioned that this is a lick over a blues scale. Those are the pool, the choice of notes that Cannonball Adderley used in this particular chorus around 319 into the video. 3 minutes and 19 seconds. So this is measure 12 over here. And all chord tones, great. Um, in the next measure, let's go over the chord tones. G7 sharp 9, what that means, think of it as the lowered third. Okay, so B flats, okay. Um, B flats would work over here. Uh, the F, the D, uh, the B natural, because it's G7. Okay, that's the third and the G. Well, what do we have? We have this flat seven. We have the fifth. Ah, we have this blue note, the flat five. That's not part of the chord per se, but it's part of the chord scale, actually. And then we've got the fourth. Oh, that's taboo. <laughs> we don't want that during a dominant seventh chord. 
but he makes it work. All right. And that's, that's the key. No pun intended. Um, then we've got the one over here. So we have some chord tones and some really dissonant tones over here. And that's great because that brings out some tension. All right. Going on C7 chord. All right. C, E, G, B flat over here. Well, we have C, B flat, G, no E. We have a D flat. That's the flat nine over there. That's some tension right there. But again, he's resolving it. So it works. The A7, not a minor, A7. So the third is C sharp. Hey, that's the same as a D flat. That works. Um, but then it goes to a C natural. Um, and that's kind of clashy, but not really because the next chord's D7 and that fits in a D7. But this note over here, this B flat, that clashes with everything. Okay, again, tension. And so does the G. Tension, it clashes over here. But we can also say that that G is anticipating the next chord, the G minor 7. Okay, and so this lick over here, ba boo doo ba boo doo ba boo doo da It's a nice little motif that's repeated three times. All right, and so it's being anticipated. Okay, so that's how we could explain that. And over here, um, all these tones are chord tones in the G minor 7 chord. Okay, so now, talking blues scale. Remember, the blues scale, as I said earlier, is the, we're in the key of G minor for me over here. So it's the 1, the flat 3, the 4, the sharp 4, or flat 5, same thing, the 5, and the flat 7. Okay, so a blues scale, again, on a piano... That's the flat seven right there. So now here's what's happening. Most people, when they play a solo and they use the blues scale, they tend to start at the root or they start at the top. They don't start anywhere in the middle. Okay. And that's one thing, another pro tip. Um, if you keep playing, you know, your blues scales or you, you, you improvise on a song and you keep doing the same thing with your blues scales, which is playing them up and down in order, that is not a pro sound. Okay. You don't want to do that. You want to get away from that. Well, how do you do it? Well, check it out. This is the five over here. The D is the five in the G blues scale. He's going five, one. And yes, he's going down, but not all the way. He skips the flat three. One, flat seven, five, flat five, four, skips the flat three, and then the one. And then he doesn't go in any kind of order over here. He, he goes up to the flat five and then brings it down. This is a classic lick, by the way. This, this sound, that sound and, and many ways of varying the, uh, the rhythms for that particular thing, flat five, four, flat three, one. And check it out. See right there, same motif, different rhythms. And then here, five flat seven one, ba do ba ba do ba ba do ba. So he's actually he's taking this blue scale, going down it almost all the way, then going halfway down, halfway down, different little, you know, same motif, different rhythm variation. And then taking this little three note lick, ba do ba ba do ba ba do ba. Okay, so that's how he's using the blue scale, but you have to pay attention to the rhythms. Just about every quarter note is on an upbeat. So it's one, two, three, four, one. Ba 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 da. Only over here, that's on a downbeat. And then we go back to upbeats. Ba do ba 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 da ba 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 da. And then here, we're on downbeats again. So this part is going to be a bit tricky to feel. So I'm going to encourage you, don't look at music because you're going to get visually distracted. Instead, really listen to it. Clap, find the downbeats, clap them, hear it many, many times, and then uh, eventually you're going to be able to feel how these are all syncopations, quarter notes on upbeats. All right, we're back. I'm going to play this lick at a slower speed. Try to catch this by ear. Here it 
revisit the original speed. How did you do with this lick? Let me know in the comments below. You know, patrons that support my channel get the PDF of this lick and the backing track. And they also get many more video lessons featuring licks from Miles Davis, Dexter Gordon, Maceo Parker, Candy Dolfer, and others. Plus they get the PDFs and the backing tracks at different speeds for these lessons. And there's other lessons on practicing and mindset. So just head on over to patreon.com slash Donna Schwartz music. And once again, thanks so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I'll see you in the next one.